All right, y'all, I made it to the medical marijuana doctor. Interested to see how this goes. everyone it's actually afternoon but i am back after about a week off from vlogging which is exactly what i needed but i missed y'all i missed it and i am back now let me catch y'all up in what's been going on in our life since we've taken our break the thursday i got out of the hospital i got into my bed at 1 p.m and i slept until 2 p.m the next day i was exhausted then Judd had to work on the weekend, so I just spent a lot of time resting and recuperating and a lot of time with my mom, which was nice. And then Monday and Tuesday, Judd was off work and we spent a lot of time together, had a few dates, it was awesome. On Tuesday, I saw my new surgeon. I love her, she's gonna take over, over my tube care and central line care if needed. My port, okay, literally the day I got home from the hospital, my port stopped giving me blood return again. And so we were gonna do cath flow, but then suddenly it started giving me blood return again. So I might need a port study. I'm not sure, right now it's working. That's all that matters. Anyways, and then Tuesday, my surgeon scheduled me for a minor outpatient surgery on Wednesday. Like I didn't know that was gonna happen. It seems like every time I end up hospitalized afterwards, I get another MRSA issue. And on Sunday I had to go to the ER because I had a lot of abscesses under my arm and they were going to lance them and take care of them but they said it was too extensive they couldn't do what they needed to do fully and my surgeon she's really great she was like you know at no point in torturing you since lidocaine doesn't work on you because of how you metabolize it from your eds she put me under and wednesday i had all of the abscesses taken care of she said she had to remove some of my skin, like it was more extensive than what could have been done with local anesthesia. So we're glad we put me under. Um, tonight I have to remove the bandages and the packing and stuff. Not looking forward to that because it hurts, but taken care of, I'm on antibiotics for it and I have this sling for my arm when holding it like this gets tiring. But anyways, y'all might also want to know how I'm doing without my G2. So honestly, it sucks my pattern i've kind of fallen into with symptoms is throughout the night i am up puking um, dry heaving nausea too intense to sleep then i finally get a few hours of sleep in the early morning all day i am extremely nauseous i'm basically doing no oral intake and if i am intaking orally it's like around 5 or 6 p.m but literally nothing is staying down so i'm 100 percent reliant on my j2 which i am happy to have nutrition like I'm thankful, but I feel miserable. However, I do not want my G-tube back. Now that it's gone, I realize that I just never really got used to it on my body. My J-tube, I hardly noticed, but the G-tube, I don't know, it was in a weird place. It always bothered me a little bit. Having one tube is so much easier than two, so I'm really trying hard to manage without the G-tube. And not being able to vent my stomach sucks, but We've tweaked my medications and today I'm going to do the thing that we're really hopeful will help me with nausea and pain and maybe other symptoms. So I'm seeing a medical marijuana doctor. In the state of Florida, medical marijuana is legalized for certain conditions and the doctor has to be registered with the Compassionate Use Board of Florida. This is not covered by insurance, so I'm paying out of pocket, but if it helps me, it's worth it. And I did try like hemp oil, which is legal, you can buy it online. There's a vlog about it here. I can't, <laughs> it hurts. But I had a bad reaction to it and I think I really need guidance from a doctor who knows about it. I have no idea if I have to like qualify and then wait a few weeks or like register somewhere. I'll let y'all know how this appointment goes. Over this past week though, without vlogging, it kind of made me realize that vlogging is taking up more of my time than I would like, but I still love to do it. So I'm making a compromise trial type thing. One of the biggest things that takes my time is reading the comments and monitoring them. And as my channel grows, that becomes more so. 
So what I'm going to do is on some of my vlogs, I'm going to disable comments just to see how that works out and if it makes things a little easier for me. Not every vlog will though. Like this vlog has comments available because all I'm doing today is getting IVIG. Today as in when this vlog uploads. My tomorrow, your today, Friday. I'm getting IVIG and I have time to really engage with y'all and go through the comments. But on days where I'm busier, I need a little bit of a break. I'm going to disable comments just to see how that works out. And if you don't like this idea, I mean this in the nicest way possible. It is my channel and I gotta think about what works for me as well. But I do want to continue connecting with y'all. So the days where I do have commenting open, I'm really gonna try and answer all of the questions and comments, and I'm gonna try and make an attempt to do more live streams on Instagram and YouTube. We still have to do our 100K live stream. It's just hard to get my schedule to match up with Judd's, but it'll happen. And of course we've got the hippo. Oh, I just poked your nose, sorry. What is that? Har Harlow, get that. Get it. Did you take that off the couch? my arm sling. What are you doing with it? Give it to me. Harlow, give! <laughs> Don't take that. <laughs> yeah, Harlow is mischievous as ever, and that is the quick update on what y'all missed while we took our break. Now, I am feeling nauseous right now, but this is like my good time for gastroparesis symptoms. Um, like I said, generally it's really at night when I start having issues and I am nauseous all day. Like I don't feel good right now. I am managing okay with medications, but definitely did a lot better when I could vent my stomach. Um, but like I said, really trying to avoid the G-tube if possible. Very hopeful for how the medical marijuana will turn out. All of my physicians are encouraging me to try it they just can't prescribe it because they have to be registered with the Compassionate Use Board, which is why I have to go see this specific doctor. So today we'll find out if I qualify and what like type of medical marijuana they suggest. I am interested in low to no THC, high CBD, um, a tincture I can put under my tongue, but um, we'll see how it goes. I'm trying to not let my hopes get up too high, but I, I've been looking forward to this. I really hope it's a good solution for me. All right, y'all. I made it to the medical marijuana doctor. Interested to see how this goes. Well, y'all made it home and it was a really good appointment. Okay, so when I first walked in the building, I was a little weirded out because it was this totally empty building. I think it was a townhouse and there was no receptionist or anything, just a piece of paper on a chair for me to sign in. Thank goodness there was another patient there because he looked at me, he goes, don't be weirded out. I was a little weirded out when I first came here too, but don't worry, it's gonna be fine. I was like, okay, <laughs> thank you for reassuring me. Then a nurse called me back, she took my blood pressure. When I made my appointment online, I automatically had to fill out a bunch of new patient paperwork that they required. And then I also brought in a list of my medications and medical conditions, some office notes from my physicians who are already treating me with my diagnosis, some testing, like I brought my nerve conduction study results. She scanned all of that in and then I went to see the doctor and this guy knew his stuff. I was explaining, you know, why I was there and why I think I would benefit from medical marijuana. And as soon as I said Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, he goes, definitely you qualify. He knew exactly what EDS was. He, well, like we had this whole conversation about it, like how it's just underdiagnosed and more common than people think. And like, I was very pleased cause he was so knowledgeable on my conditions that most people don't really know much about. And he thinks that the medical marijuana will really help me. I qualified based on my chronic pain and neuropathy and gastroparesis with the nausea and vomiting. And he gave me some guidance because I told him I don't want to feel a high. Personally, I just don't. And he said, start with CBD based products only. But if I am not getting enough benefit, try low THC because they have products that are low enough in THC that they shouldn't impair me. But he said the THC really helps activate the beneficial properties in the CBD oil. And he recommended a dispensary I can go to and he said everyone there is super knowledgeable so it was good. So the doctor gave me my patient ID number because I qualified for medical marijuana use based on Florida's laws and now I have an email from the state in my inbox. I use the patient ID to log in. I have to pay the $70 application fee for Florida and then in about four weeks they will send me my medical marijuana card and then I can go to a dispensary. Doctor already recommended which one I go to 
and I have to pay for the products out of pocket. Insurance doesn't cover this or anything like that, but I truly hope this will all be worth it. The doctor was confident that I'll get at least some relief from medical marijuana, and I'm definitely not gonna consider even thinking about getting another G-tube until I give medical marijuana a good try. So hoping the next few weeks go by quickly so I can get my card and trial it. Anyways, I am feeling not very good. So I'm gonna go in, complete the email the state sent me, and then lay down for a bit. Well, this has been the rest of our day. Thanks for that little kiss. The nausea has just been bad. But I am hopeful there is another possible solution for me with the medical marijuana. I filled everything out online that the state required and in three to four weeks hopefully I will have the card so I can go to a dispensary. Also before Judd left for work this evening we had to take the bandaging off and take the packing out. There was so much packing in the wounds. Taking that out hurts so much and I couldn't look at it myself. I'm so glad Judd did it. I don't know. Other people's blood doesn't weird me out, but my own blood I can't handle very well for some reason. I know it's strange. And then we had to repack the wound and the surgeon had to get the infection out. And so one of the incisions, it's super deep. Judd said he could like stick his whole finger in there. So we had to repack it. It's just not a pleasant experience. And I'm sick and tired of these MRSA abscesses and outbreaks I keep struggling with so I need one of my doctors to give me a solution because obviously what they're having me do with the antibiotics and the stuff in the nose and the Hybeclins body wash is not enough so I need this MRSA to be gone and stay away because I don't want to keep dealing with this it hurts and it's ugh, horrible anyways as troublesome and bothersome as this MRSA outbreak was, at least I am past the worst of it and I am recovering from it. <sighs> Anyways, I am ready to go to sleep. Harlow looks sleepy. Tomorrow I have IVIG in the morning and then Judd and I are going to Orlando. We're gonna spend quite a bit of time with Paul and Janice, which we've been looking forward to. <sighs> and with that, I will say goodnight and thanks for joining us on our adventure.